Hello, 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 and welcome to another tutorial, another grasshopper tutorial that we do on this channel. This one is going to be a little bit different though. Uh, here we're going to look into both grasshopper and blender, and we're going to see how we can do the same thing in grasshopper and blender and kind of compare the two, you know, see, see what's the benefit of each. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create um, a system, a, a physics-based system, where um, we will collide solid objects together, right? So it's going to be a rigid body uh, physics simulation. I will start with Grasshopper, then we will do the same thing in Blender. Okay, so let's begin. For this, we will be using Kangaroo, as expected, because Kangaroo is great at physics stuff, right? And Kangaroo, I believe right these days, it just ships with Grasshopper, so you don't need to download it or install it. Uh, but if you have a very old version of Rhino and old version of Grasshopper, then Kangaroo 2 is, is the plugin that you're looking for. And it's available in Food for Rhino. Uh, foodforrhino.com. Anyway, let's begin. So I want to do a um, rigid body simulation and for that I need to create a few rigid bodies here in the in the 3D model, right? In the 3D model space. So I'll just enlarge the perspective viewport and I'll just create, uh, let's do what everyone's doing, let's do some chain links, right? So I'll just make a few chain links. Um, for that, there's like a, a bunch of different ways of how we can, you know, how we can actually do that. And I think the one that we can use, at least the one that I would like to use, um, perhaps it's a stupid one. Ah, let's, let's just do it that way. Um, I will be taking um, a torus. So let's go for mesh tools. So mesh tools here in the top. And let's select a torus shape, mesh torus, like that. And let's uh, create a torus around the 0, 0, 0 coordinate, so 0, enter. So now we're starting to draw the torus. And let's say its radius is 10. And its second radius, like the inner, not inner radius, but the thickness of it, I guess. Let's say that is um, 2. Mm, maybe more. Let's go for 4. Sure. Click. So that's our torus. If I change this to shaded view, this is how it looks like. Nothing spectacular. Um, for a chain link, this is a little bit too circular. So I'll just hit F10 or points on, I'll jump to top view and I will just drag out the chain links like, like, like that. Not the chain link, sorry, the half of the torus to the, to the side. And actually I want it to be kind of controlled, so I'll drag it by a fixed amount. So if we have 10 plus 4, 14, uh, let's go for 28 more, or let's go for 26 more. So, I believe... Yeah, this, this seems fine. It seems fine, right? Um, it seems to be a little bit big, though. Like, a little bit too thick, but maybe it's going to work out. How, how, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's six more, I think that's fine, uh, we might need to um, make it thinner, but, but that's what we're gonna do later. Anyway, let us take this chain link and let's copy it to the side by, oops, holding down the Alt key by 34 something like that, and let's rotate it 90 degrees. So now we have two of them. Let's kind of repeat, uh, select both of them and repeat this procedure, but now we're not moving it by 34, we are moving it by 68, right? 
And now we're going to repeat this procedure again and move it by 136, 68 times 2. Right? And this is like good enough for our like starting test. All right, so we have this going on and I want all of these guys to be now referenced in Rhino, uh, bleh, in Grasshopper. So I'll, these are meshes, right? So I'll just create a mesh component here. Right click, set one mesh. Nope, that's not one mesh, set multiple meshes and set all of these. Hit enter, we're good to go. All right, so we have this going on now. Let us let us start building actually our simulation, right? Because we have the meshes here and we just need to simulate them with gravity and so on. So it's time to build uh, the, the kangaroo simulation. So I will expand this a little bit more and I'll go to the main tab here in, in, in kangaroo 2 and I'll find rather than using a solver, I'll be using a bouncy solver. The difference between these two is that solver doesn't, at least it, to my knowledge, doesn't have friction. Or does it? No, it doesn't. Okay. Perhaps. No. So it doesn't have friction. While here, um, this this bounty solver has damping and I will want to use that damping to make sure that things are not um, too jittery so to say but uh, that's layer for now bouncy solver that's great goal objects okay so this is going to be a merge and we we will connect a bunch of goals to our simulation so the first goal is going to be um, rigid body goal it's it's under goal six six depth of wait no that's not depth of field that's degrees of freedom <laughs> six DOF, uh, six degrees of freedom and i will just find rigid body that that's that's a goal for my meshes right so these are my parts they become rigid bodies meaning that they kind of have... Um... First of all, they're not stretchy anymore. So they con con contain their own form. Second of all, they have the possibility to bounce off from one another and, 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 and so on. And they also record their position in the world. Okay, so we have rigid body output here. I will just plug that one into D1 and you can see that immediately once I do that, the simulation begins. And since the simulation begins, it kind of runs through um, and it immediately converges, meaning it's finished, right? And the reason why it's finished is because all that simulation does right now is it shows you the, the rigid bodies, right? So the output here is just those eight meshes that we plugged into the rigid body input here. So I will just create a mesh, oops, sorry about that. I will create a mesh component here and connect the output to the mesh component here so that we can see. And actually I can even do preview, custom preview, like that. And let me hide a bunch of stuff. So this is the output that we are going to get from our bouncy solver, this custom preview here. <clears throat> okay, what are other goals? And by the way, I'm not messing around with these. These are fine. You know, for what we are doing, they are fine, these settings. It's, it's basically plane for initial position. So when the object rotates, the plane rotates with, with the object, but you need to specify what kind of plane does the object ha have at the start. It kind of automatically does that, so that's great. If you want to move some points around with the object, you can. If you want to increase the strength, the influence strength of these rigid bodies, then you can do, do that as well. For now, we don't need to. Um, next up, we want these guys to be affected by gravity. So I will go to goals. I believe it's under goals point. Yes, it's under goals point load. Load. I'll plug that one in and load. It's basically like a force that acts on the object. It asks us for a point rather than a mesh. So if I give it a mesh, it's... 
okay if i give it a mesh the output of it is null as you can see here so it doesn't work i need to give it a point and actually the thing that uh, i've learned uh, and that actually works is if we measure the volume of these meshes we get their center points and we can indeed plug <laughs> Okay, it flew away, but you, you saw it, uh, right? We can plug, plug it in, plug in the center point to the load, and it's going to affect the parts. Uh, so I have disconnected it for now, and I will be resetting. So that's a button. Button. I will be resetting my um, bouncy solver. So that the elements are back here. And I will also create a toggle, Boolean toggle, for turning it on or off, right? So I can turn it on or off. And now I will reconnect volume to load, reset, and turn it on. And then you will see how this flies away. Turn on, we flies away. The reason why it flies away, why these elements fly away, is because they're not locked anywhere, right? So we need to lock them. The way we lock them is twofold. Like there are two ways of how we can lock them. One way is we could lock the points. Like uh, just like we lock the center point, I believe. We, or, or we can lock the vertices of specific meshes. Or we can use the support system here. I prefer to use the support system. It seems to work a little bit more stable. So I will use that. So that's under six uh, degrees of freedom, goal six degrees of freedom, support system. Which asks me for a frame. Oh wait, did I? Yeah, I think that's gonna work. It should work. So it's, it, it's asking me for a frame, which is basically a plane that I need to restrain. So I will say around each center point of the mesh, give me an XY plane. And let's connect it to the frame like so. Let's just see. I will connect it as a D3 input here, and I just want to see if this works, if these guys will not fly away anymore. They don't. That's great. There's a bunch of nulls that are happening here now, uh, so I will be cleaning up the list. Clean tree. Like that, clean tree uh, removes the nulls. And we can check, yeah, we are still getting eight meshes, which is great, and everything seems to work perfectly. So now uh, there is one thing. Everything is supported, right? Like every single chain link is supported, meaning it is a support rather, meaning they can't move. We need to support only the first one, or the first one and the second one. Actually, let's do first one and, uh, sorry, first one and the last one. So how do we do? The first one and the last one. Well, um, it's a little bit tricky here because I am referencing in the meshes just by dragging around them and just just by simply dragging around them and um, uh, setting multiple meshes, meaning that they might not be referenced from left to right, you know, in, in, in a clean fashion. So what we need to do is we need to sort these points along a certain axis. Or we can be a little bit more vigilant and actually set multiple meshes and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? In a, in a clean way. Either way works. I will actually show you how to sort them. So these are center points. Let me show you. These are center points and they have coordinates, right? So I can deconstruct the center points into their coordinates X, Y, and Z, right? Just like that. And I can see that um, these chain links are going along the X coordinates. So this one. 
So these are the numbers that will keep increasing and they kind of, this is the first point and it has like a 12.9 in my case, uh, in X direction. So I can sort those numbers from smallest to highest and together with those numbers, I can sort the points just like that. So the numbers come into K and they get sorted from smallest to highest and the middle points come into A and are sorted together with the numbers. So what I get here is a reshuffled list of points where I am sure that this is the first point and this is the last point. And I can use that for my load inputs and for my uh, frame inputs here. So this is all we need to do, to do right? Actually, then we make it like so. Yeah, this is a little bit cleaner. Okay, so these are now our sorted points. And what I'm going to say for the frames, just give me the first and the last one. How do we do that? Well, we do list item. List item. And by just simply connecting the point list to the list item tool, uh, we will get the first point in the in the list. But how do we get the last one? Well, there are two ways. Well, there's like a hundred ways of how to do it. The one that I really like is just zooming into the list item tool and clicking on the plus sign here in the top, which gives me a list item at minus one. So list item minus one is actually, it wraps around the list and it comes back to the, uh, to the end of the list, right? So it kind of counts backwards and since backwards doesn't have any point here, it will jump into the last point. So list item minus one is this. And then I can just simply connect this one, this one, and disconnect this one like that. Bam. These two get locked. Others fly away. Why do they still fly away? Well, that's because there's no collisions, right? They can just pass each other. So I need to fix that. Let me hide the chain links. Let me hide the... By the way, if I'm going to uh, too slow, bottom right corner of your YouTube screen, under settings, you can find speed up or speed down. You can speed me up two times. Anyway, <clears throat> we have our supports. And by the way, uh, the, the supports, you can choose which parts are being locked. X, Y, Z. Uh, so movement can be locked in X, Y, or Z direction. Uh, and also rotation can be locked in X, Y, or Z. Uh, around X, Y, or Z vectors, which is super. I will show you how this works in just a second. All right, uh, now let's add collision. So the collision that we want to use is called six uh, solid collide. It's, it's called solid collide. Like that. That's going to be our fourth input here. And basically the way it works is it asks for two meshes. It asks for mesh A and mesh B. And we are not, um, just to kind of reiterate, we are not using goals, collision, anything from here where it's collider, curve collide, blah, 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 because these guys only work with points and curves. And planes? I don't know if they work with planes, but they work with points and curves. In this case, we need it to be a mesh, right? Well, in this case, it can be a curve technically, but uh, when you do it with solid collide, you can have any form you want, right? So it's heavier, it's much, much heavier, but it has a much, much higher degree of freedom. But basically, it only works with pairs of meshes. That's a problem because we have eight, right? So first mesh needs to kind of calculate its collisions with the second. Uh, also first one calculates collisions with the third and then and, and so on. And the uh, fourth collision, uh, yeah. fourth chain link calculates its collisions with every other one. The trick is that if 
uh, element one, let's say this chain link is element one, this chain link is element two. If element one calculates its collision with element two, then element two doesn't need to calculate its collision with element one. At least that's my theory, right? So what we're going to do is we'll take our meshes and we will use cross reference. Cross reference. And we'll connect our meshes to both inputs A and B, like that. We will right click on cross reference. And here we have different options, different settings of how to cross reference. So I will not be going through every one of these settings, but from what I've just explained to you, right, that if first one kind of, if first one, uh, first element already has calculated its collisions with the second one, the second one doesn't need to calculate its collisions with the first one. This one is called lower triangle strict. This one. Like that, we, we drag the cross reference over to solid collide and A is going to be a set of, a first set of meshes or uh, not or, mesh B is going to be the second set of meshes. Pla uh, plane A, plane B we don't care about. Strength uh, we don't care about right now, let's just see if it works. So now collisions are on, so this should work. I will reset. And I will turn it on, and it doesn't. <laughs> Could it be that load is too strong? Let's try to reduce the load vector. Right now the load is set to 1, so let me do Z, uh, vector Z, and let's give it like a small value, 0 .0 0 0.1. I think it will need to be even slower. Reset. Yeah, it needs to be it needs to be even slower. But you can see that it actually kind of works, right? Okay, so we have that going on. Uh, it needs to be slower for sure. So 0 .0, 0 0.05. Let's go for for half of that. 0 0.05 and Z. So the gravity or negative gravity is super low. And also, and by the way, if you want it to be negative, you just do minus 0.05. So now it's going to go down, right? Um, let's just see. Yeah, that works. And we have our chain. Let me turn it off a bit and turn off the preview. So this is how how it looks like right now. Pretty simple. Just, you know, just your chain things. And it's quite hectic, right? So it's quite bouncy. Really like intense bounciness going on. So I'm going to say damping. Damping needs to be lower. Uh, 0 0.99 is the default value. So I'll do 0 0.95 for damping. I'll reset, I'll run this again. And now you can see that it, this is, first of all, it's slower, yes, but also it's much more calmer, right? It doesn't bounce as much. Well, now it starts bouncing. Why does it bounce? Hmm, that's super strange. Um, either way. We still have a few settings to change here. Threshold, stop when average movement is less than this value, right? Um, so here it's set to zero. Uh, we can set the threshold to be a little bit higher than zero to just stop the simulation before it starts bouncing uh, along everywhere. So let's do... I wonder if this will work. Um, 1e minus, uh, minus 10. So this is 1 to the power of minus 10. 
And by default, it's 1 to the power of 15. So let's just see if this does anything. And will you stop now? No, you start bouncing, huh? Okay, let's try 1 to the power of minus 5 then. Reset. Run again. Bam, bam, bam. It's a lot of calibration, you know. Still a bouncy mess. Now I'm not even sure if this works. E 1 to the power of minus 1. Reset, run. Yeah, okay, so it does work. It immediately converges because there's not enough movement. So to the power of minus 3. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. So it actually found its, it's kind of semi-equilibrium. That's good. So there's one thing. Then tolerance is uh, whatever. Um, we, we don't mess with that. Iterations is um, basically how many steps is it going to kind of... How many steps is it going to do before it shows you a frame of the visualization? So if I say 50 steps, just show me 50 steps, right? It's still going to keep going, right? Because it calculates so many. Uh, so I think like 10 iterations is fine. It's kind of smooth, so it's nice. We could, we could even do like one iteration per like this will be much closer to ah, but then we need to do e, e to the power of minus six. This is going to be much closer to the regular solver and right? the, the way it works. While it's doing that, it's hot in here, so I'll just take off my sweater. <laughs> my wife is making fun of me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so we do have it working. It seems to be okay. It's a little bit bouncy, uh, but it is, it is working fine. You know, like good enough. I could reduce damping even further. 0 0.9. Uh, increase the threshold to minus 8 and then maybe increase the strength of gravity to minus uh, 0 0.1 <clears throat> run this again so now with this amount of damping you can really see that the bounciness is much less Anyway, but that's, you know, we, we end up with a freaking chain. That's that's cool. Okay, so let's do something more, right? Let's do... Let's do a grid. So let me show... There's my chain links. And let me just take one of them. Copy them to the side. Rotate them 90 degrees, move them somewhere here. Actually, I need to look at this in the top view. Uh, something like that should be fine. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, it was 38, right? No, it wasn't. That was way too... Uh, 68. Yes, it was 68. So let me just do 68, 68, 68, 68, like that. Take all of these chains and copy them by 34, minus 34. Again, no, I don't know. I can't count, so I'll just do it by, by feel, you know. So now we have two rows of chains, like that. That's good. Uh, let's do two more. 
So I'll just grab these. Ah, uh, but they won't fit. Oh no, they won't fit. What do we do? Okay, we need to make them fit. So what I'm going to do is actually take this, move it by 10 more or maybe 20 more. So our chain link is much longer. And actually let me, while we're at it, let me widen it up a bit. So I'm just going to uh, take a few points here and do minus two and take a few points here and do two. So just, you know, a little bit wider chain. Okay, so we have that. Um, and let us repeat the procedure. I know it's, it's kind of boring, but what can you do? So I'm going to, first of all, how big is this bounding box? Um, distance from here to here we have 74 millimeters and then the thickness of it was eight so it's uh, i believe if we just copy it by 74 to the side it touches and then minus eight it does that so it wasn't eight no it was eight it was eight uh so minus eight more it touches perfectly there uh, so let's do minus five, something like that, I think will, will work. And now we can rotate this 90 degrees, just like that. Okay, great. Um, so 78 minus 16 is 62 minus five is 57. So if my theory is correct, 57, shit. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, bounding box, distance. Oh my God, my math. One to seven, one to seven minus 16 is 111 minus five is 106, 106. There we go, okay, so it's 106. Once and twice. I think that's enough. Yeah. And now let's take the, the, this one, copy it. You can speed, like just skip through this, this part. I know you know how to do this. So let's do it this way. That's great. Uh, one, Zero six, yes, great, and then no idea how much this is, but let's just see sixty eight, probably. Not sixty eight, sixty four. So let's try minus four. Yeah, that that's it. So it's sixty four. Okay, so now I can do the same thing again, minus 64 this time. These are colliding now, so I'll just move them to the side. There we go, finally. We have a chain grid. Oh wait, we need to do it once more. Yeah, uh, so 64, was it? Yes, it was. That, 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 that. And the 64, oh, no, no, no. Just drag it like that. Perfect. Okay. Let's reference all of the meshes here. Set multiple meshes like that. One thing, one thing now, important thing. Um, this, what we have here now will not work. And it will, it will not work because of the sorting, right? This sorts along only Y axis. Now we need to sort it along Y and X axis, right? Because this is a grid. So this will become a little bit more complicated. Um, how do we do this? So we, we have our 
our all of our elements and they are sorted along x axis and then they can get sorted along y axis but that would suck can we just kind of cheat a bit I want to cheat. Can I cheat? I will cheat. So let's do it this way. I know that I only need... Ooh! Or... Or... Let's not cheat. And let's not sort. So I will not be sorting, but rather I will just simply have two mesh containers. One is for all meshes right and the other one is going to be for support meshes easy set multiple click 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 these are my supports and now for the support meshes so oh yeah i need volume I need to measure the volume of all of the meshes to get the center points and to add the load to the center points like that. That's fine. But now for the frames, I don't need this list item anymore because I have support meshes. Um, these four guys here. So I can just simply um, measure their volume again. Like that. And just straight up connect their center points to the frame lock. Like that. Should be fine. Okay. Let's investigate. Investigation. So I will hide everything here so that we can see it nice, neat and dandy. Just like that. We have our gravity. We have our collisions. We have our damping. Everything is ready to go. Okay. Let's reset. Let's run it. I have no idea if it works or not. It's really slow. Can I do damping like 0.92? This is gonna be a little bit more bouncy, but at least we will see if it works. It does work. Kinda. Yes, this is pushing on this, so it's rotating. And it is indeed becoming a dome. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so we are making it into a dome. And again, this is something that um, you could do with curve collisions. I'm just blabbing while it's doing the simulation. This is something that you can do with curve collisions as well, not necessarily just mesh collisions. But the cool thing about this is that now you can change this chain, this chain, these chain elements to anything you want, right? To basically you can add geometry to it and also make that geometry collide so it doesn't need to be a perfect chain link it can be thicker on one side lighter on the other and so on right um either way it is doing its thing and i like what i see i almost like what i see <laughs> It's, it's, it's almost, oh no, 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 don't break, don't break, don't, ch -ch -ch -ch. stop, I'm scared, why is this, why is this doing that, it, it, it looks like it's going to break, this one is doing fine, but this one is really bad, do we have any other parts here, no, Okay, so let's, let us, can we do collision strength 2? Can we make them collide a bit more? And then run 
Will this push out? It does. But also it becomes a little bit more wobbly. Well, it does seem to, to, to be doing its, its thing. Did it find its wrist position, by the way? Is the this part still... Yeah, this one is still going down. Okay, but you get the idea. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so it... Uh, I think I, I, I need to have a little bit more damping and so on, but it does work, right? So we don't need to... Um, we don't need to do it. Again. Oh, yeah, and it also broke there. So it, there, there's a lot of breaking. While I was doing the testing for this, 90% um, of it breaks. Uh, but 10% that doesn't is really cool. But 90% just breaks. Anyway, let's move on to... Let me actually save this. Save. Um, I don't know the code of this tutorial 2020 47. Tutorials are available for my Patreons. These files are available for my Patreons. Be sure to become a supporter. If you support the channel, you get the files for free. Or if you don't support the channel, you need to actually focus and kind of follow the tutorials, but if you're lazy, just support the channel and you'll get the tutorials for free. Add over. Okay, let's go to Blender. So in Blender, first of all, get rid of everything. Uh, I will do the same thing. So I will just create a tor shape, tab. Um, how is that? Zoom in, top view, wireframe view one to to get into um, vertice editing mode get that actually i can kind of do ah, doesn't matter g x this doesn't something like that i think is fine um so so that's our our shape right uh, for for the chain tab tab out of this um g uh, no, shift D to duplicate along the X axis. So X for X axis. Um, and here I just specify 3.4 like that. Um, R X or actually, let me do this uh, screencast keys. There we go. Uh, show them. Will you see them? You won't because my camera is in the way, so my camera is gonna live here now. Uh, there we go. So where was I? I duplicated this R X uh, ninety. There we go. And I believe I used three point four. So if I do Shift D, uh, Shift D. I could do an array, I know, I know, but I'm just trying to do, maybe we should do an array, maybe that's going to be faster, no, it's not, okay, let's just do shift D X 6.8, shift D X 6.8, okay, so we have that, now shift D X uh, 13.6 okay that that's that's my bad shift D X 13.6 perfect okay so we have that going on that's a little bit more chains than what we saw in uh, grasshopper but fine um, it, 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 it should be fine so now shift D Y uh, R R X 90 R Z 90. There we go. So we have our chain link. Grab 
g4 grab x4 along x-axis we have our chain link going along the x-axis and shift d x uh, you think i remember 6.8 yes 6.8 so i do remember and these two will go along the x-axis by 13.6 like that perfect okay now let's grab these not all of them though just these and this and this uh shift d y y um i don't know how much <laughs> sorry uh, shift D Y. Let's try four point eight. Ah, minus 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 four point eight. I think that's fine. Is there intersections? There are no intersections there, so that that looks okay. So we have that. Um, we used four point eight, right? So we do that again. Shift D Y. 4.8 minus 4.8 like that minus 4.8 why do you not want to work with me shift d y minus 4.8 oh minus 0.48 ah, 4.8 there we go Yeah, in, in retrospect, uh, array <laughs> seems now seems like a good idea. Um, anyway, almost done there. Minus four point four point eight. Okay, that's that's good enough. You know, straight up good enough. So we have our our chains. They are a little bit too small. So I'll just do shift, uh, not shift, uh, just. S for scale and I'll just say yeah sure be like five times bigger like that why did it copy hello s oh because I accidentally okay s5 there we go so we have that now they are like scale they're moved they're all over the place so we need to fix them so I'll just select all of them I'll go to object apply all transforms like that and also object set origin origin to geometry so that the center point of their weight is the, the weight center point is in the middle of the geometry so we have that going on yes okay next up check for collisions no collisions okay good we find one chain or not find we pick one chain and we will kind of add all of the settings for the solid collisions uh, how is it called rigid body rigid body we'll add all of the settings for rigid body collisions to this particular chain and then we will uh, apply the same settings for all other chains okay so we have this guy here we go on the right hand side we go to physics tab here physics properties and we choose rigid body easy done we choose the mass of it uh one kilogram i think it's fine i don't know never used it uh but the important thing is con uh, where it says shape convex hull no 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 no. we use shape mesh if shape con if it says shape convex hull it means that your geometry cannot have um cannot have holes basically in it and our chain links of course have holes in it so it needs to be mesh so the form that's fine sensitivity 0 0.04 i think is a little bit too brutal so let's do 0 0.02 margin uh surface response friction 0 0.5 bouncing a zero I, I don't know we'll see we'll see uh, collections that's fine dynamics damping uh, that that's fine so all we did was just uh, change the shape to mesh and also change the sensitivity to a lower value lower value okay we have this done so now I need to take this and apply it to all of our other geometry so I'm going to select everything 
And I believe holding down the shift key, I will also select this guy here. Uh, the, the, the main one. So it's basically, it needs to be the last selection, right? So everything is dark orange, this one is light orange. Uh, you'll figure it out. You go to object. <clears throat> Once you've done that, you go to object, rigid body, and I can't do, do it. What? Why? Hello? Okay, let's try again. So I have this selected. Holding down the shift key, I select every, uh, all other chains, object, rigid body. Now I can do it. Okay. Uh, you choose copy from active. So you do that. Copy from active. That's it. That's it. So now it's all of these elements are rigid bodies. I believe if I press play. What the? Why are you mother? Okay, so all of these apparently are duplicates. I don't know when, but I managed. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. I managed to do a bunch of duplicates. So we need to get rid of them. I don't know how to. Let's let's see how many duplicates did I actually accidentally make. So let's delete. It crashed. So, Blender, wanna talk about it? Let me rebuild this whole thing without duplicates, and then we will continue the tutorial. All right, we're back with a, a working model this time, hopefully, and let me... Just check if everything is in order, yes. And let me just run the simulation. So this is how it's, you know, it's just falling down. So every step that I've made up until now, this is just repeated, you know, uh, no nothing new. So according to the timeline, everything is in order. Okay. And as per usual, they are just falling down. So we need to lock a few of them um, in, in place. So I will be locking this guy, this one, this one, and this one, right? The corners. So to lock something in Blender, you just select the object and you choose rigid body constraint. You choose that, it becomes locked, right? So it, it gets added as a rigid body constraint. But what, there's one more thing that you need to do and it's go here to settings uh, sorry, not settings, but under rigid body for that particular object, you need to choose that it's not dynamic. So you need to untick this. Bam, that's it. So I'm going to do it uh, three more times. Rigid body constraint, not dynamic. This one, rigid body constraint, not dynamic. And this one, not dynamic and also rigid body constraint. Okay, let's press play. It's that easy. It's that easy. Okay, let's make it nice. So this is freaking Antonio Gaudi type of stuff. And let us, let us, let us, let us invert the gravity. Because Antonio Gaudi, when he did his his domes, he needed to use mirrors and so on and actually sketch upside down and then not sketch upside down, but make a sketch and then turn the sketch of the hanging chain models upside down to see how, you know, the perfect shape of a dome. In our case, we, we have the possibility to just go to the world settings under gravity. We can just choose that Z is up and we can even choose what kind of gravity we'll have. So I'll have like half, five meters per second squared. <laughs> Sorry. So let's go back to frame zero and run the simulation. Bam. It's done. Actually, I want to run it further. Let's do 500 frames and I will just go to rigid body world and I will find cache 
and here I will also change it to 500 frames so that it's basically 500 frames get cached. Nice, huh? It's cool. And it's a little bit better than, than the Grasshopper one. So the benefits and drawbacks, right? This one is um, like for, for, for simulations like these, I think Blender is better, honestly, like for rigid body simulations. But with Grasshopper, with Kangaroo, and I'm not going to show this in this particular tutorial, but in Kangaroo, you can add much more goals and much more different different components in the simulations. So if you want to simulate something that is really um, customized, so let's say these chains are kind of hanging by a bending rod and, and so on, you can do it in Grasshopper and you should do it in Grasshopper. But if it's just collisions that you want to simulate, I think Blender is, is a, a, it's better, you know, it's straight up better and also faster. This file is also going to be available for, actually, let me just save it for Patreon supporters. Second ad over. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is what we have. And you, you might think that, oh, well, this is not, uh, this is not architectural. This, you know, these are just chains. Well, you know, they, we, we can't just use chains to, to, to simulate architecture. It makes no sense. And to that, I say, Screw you, this is the next day. Here's a 3D printed solid chain dome. I do what I want. I'm the freaking Antoni Gaudi of the digital age. No one can tell me what I can and can't.